Let's talk about ideal and regular solution models for mixing. So these are models which will result in an expression for delta G of mixing from which we can get one step closer then to predicting the phase diagram for a binary system. So let's just uh, stop for a minute and recall the expression for delta B of mixing. Right, This is for the total extent of the system. On a per mole basis, we write this just delta B of mixing is B of the solution minus B of the reference state. So we will start with an ideal solution. And we've talked about this several times already related to the activity and chemical potential. But in an ideal solution, all components are Raoultian for all compositions. So this means that the activity of I is equal to the composition of I for all values. And physically what it means for it to be an ideal solution is that all bonds have the same energy. So AA, BB, and AB bonds have the same energy. Now in reality, this is rarely true, although sometimes we come upon the coincidence where these bond energies are close enough that this is a good approximation. So let's look then at solutions. And let's start with the Gibbs free energy. All right, so we come back to this definition where we say that delta G of mixing is equal to G of the solution minus G of the pure stuff. So G of the solution we can get from this expression here. This is just the weighted average, not the weighted average, the weighted sum of the partial molar Gibbs free energies, which is the chemical potential, right, for the stuff in solution. Subtract from that the weighted sum of the partial molar Gibbs free energies or chemical potentials of the pure stuff. Okay, now we're going to rearrange this a little bit so that we have XA to start with and we get mu A minus mu A for the pure stuff plus XB times a similar difference. Right now, if you remember how we defined activity we can get the activity in terms of this expression here. And so we end up with XA times RT ln A plus XB and RT oops, ln of activity of B. Now we said that in an ideal solution the activity is just equal to the composition. And so we can plug that in. So we get XA, RT, LN, XA, and XB, RT, LN, XB. And we'll just factor out the RT, and we end up with delta G mixing for an ideal solution to have the following form. RT, XA, LN, XA, plus XB, LN, XB. And we will use this expression here again and again and again. So this we want to keep handy as delta G for an ideal solution. Now let's take a look at 
what that looks like. So it's a function of temperature, and it's a function of composition, but nothing else, and nothing in one system or another. So this is what the plot would look like. A couple of things to point out here. So this is a plot of delta G mix as a function of composition. And you'll notice that uh, delta G is always less than zero for all T and for all X. This means that mixing is always energetically favorable. And these different lines on here correspond to different temperatures, all the way from 100K down here to 1000K. So the higher the temperature, the more negative delta G becomes, or the more energetically favorable that would be. So let's look at some of these that we can consider for an ideal solution. And we will look at the entropy of mixing. Right. Uh, we know that from the coefficient relationship that S is related to G as the negative of dG dt. And we can actually take this derivative relatively easily. Even I can do that. And we end up with negative R xA ln xA plus xB ln x. B, B, not a 3. So this is our expression for delta S of mixing. Because XA and XB are less than 1, this term is always negative, and so delta S mixing is always positive. So the entropy, or the number of possible configurations in a system, always goes up when you mix. Another thing to note is that this is not a function of temperature, right? There's no T in here anywhere. And this expression might look familiar to you from when we derived the equation for configurational entropy. It's actually the exact same thing, and this is not really a coincidence. We can take a look at how this, the entropy of mixing looks as a function of composition. So here we go. This is delta S mixing as a function of composition for an ideal solution and for all temperatures, right? And this is symmetric, which it should be based on the format of that equation. So let me just note here, this is for ideal solutions. Okay, for ideal solutions at the enthalpy of mixing and then the volume. So the enthalpy of mixing, we want to keep in mind that G is defined as H minus TS. So delta H is equal to delta G plus T delta S. And if we plug in what we just found for delta G mixing and delta S mixing, we will find that this is equal to zero. Okay, so for an ideal solution, delta H mix equals zero, always. And this suggests that there's not any sort of change in the bond energies when we mix. And finally, the last one that we might want to consider is the volume of mixing for an ideal solution. And we can find delta V of mixing by taking the derivative of G with respect to P. And because P is not even in the equation, then this is also equal to zero. Now, this doesn't mean that the volume of mixing is zero. It just means that the volume change of mixing is equal to zero. So if we were to plot V of the solution as a function of the composition, it might look something like this, where this is the molar volume of peer B, and this is the molar volume of peer A. And so the volume of solution is 
basically exactly equal to the volume of the components. And so delta V mixing is equal to zero. Okay, so let's then take a look at the regular which now offers some adjustability, basically, because the ideal solution model didn't allow any difference between one material system and another, right? The other thing is that in the ideal solution model, we assumed that all bond energies were equal, and this is generally not true. So the regular solution model has one adjustable parameter, which lets us sort of tailor it from one material system to another. And there are two components to the delta G of mixing, right? This is delta H mix minus T delta S mix. So we are going to say that delta S of mixing for the regular solution model is the same as delta S mixing in the ideal solution model, which is really just to say that it's only configurational entropy that we are interested in. And that turns out to not be such a bad assumption, really. So that part's the same. The difference here comes in in the enthalpy of mixing for the regular solution model. And we are going to allow this to be a function of composition. So this is the difference here. So before, for the ideal solution, this was equal to zero, and now we're going to let it basically be non-zero. To understand the regular solution model, we find an excess quantity. And an excess quantity is really just the excess above and beyond what the ideal solution model accounts for. So we can define this as whatever the ideal solution model accounted for plus the excess amount. Okay, so in the regular solution model, the excess entropy is zero, right? Because there's nothing extra that we had to add on. However, the excess Gibbs free energy of mixing, as we compare this to the regular solution model, is going to be this enthalpy of mixing term, because we basically did not have that before. Okay, We are going to take the simplest model that we possibly can for delta H of mixing, which is a function of composition, and we're going to just simply define it like this. Okay, so it's a function of the composition of A and the composition of B, and then this one adjustable parameter, alpha. Okay, and that is how we are going to define that quantity. So we can now write an expression for delta G of mixing for the regular solution model which looks like this, alpha x a x b, so that's the enthalpy of mixing, and then we have minus t delta s, which adds on this term here. So this is the important equation to take away from here for the regular solution model. It is a function of composition, right? it's a function of temperature, and it's also a function of this one adjustable parameter. So some examples here. So this is for the regular solution model. And what I have here are plots of delta G as a function of X and for three different values of alpha. So here's alpha positive, here's alpha equals zero, and here's alpha negative. So this plot in the middle actually corresponds to the ideal solution. And this is basically what you already saw a few slides back. You will notice that 
when alpha is negative, the delta G curves are even more negative, sort of relative to the ideal solution, right? And that if alpha is negative, alpha negative, then delta H mix is negative, and this will mix for all T and all X just like the ideal solution. Now, we have sort of the opposite case over here. So alpha is positive. The enthalpy of mixing is positive. So these things don't, it's not energetically favorable to mix at the bond level, okay? Now, at some temperatures, we see that delta G mix is positive. So this means that mixing won't occur. At some temperatures, we see that delta G mixing is negative for some compositions and positive for others. So mixing will sometimes occur here. As the temperature gets high enough, though, that entropy term starts to take over and mixing will occur. So mixing occurs at higher temperatures. And sort of what temperature that occurs at depends on the actual magnitude of alpha. So this is how the regular and ideal solution models can be used to generate delta G mix as a function of composition and temperature.